Oh God, that we have the things that we need, the things we desire, oh God. We thank you for allowing us to come in before your presence once again to give honor and glory to you, oh God, because it's all due your name, Lord. We thank you for those that are on their way, those that are here, Lord God. We bless you and we thank you. We ask you, oh God, to help us, oh God, to receive what you have prepared for us today, what you want us to hear, and to give us understanding about it. Bless the speaker, Lord God. You, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Glad to be here this morning. Glad to see you all uh, with your beautiful faces, smiling faces, and God is so good. Amen. 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 So we're just going to get uh, get right into the word. What is your purpose on earth? Amen. Just think about what is your purpose on earth? Sometimes it's a daily struggle when I think about the purpose on earth, but it's only a daily struggle whenever I'm thinking in the carnal. Amen. What is your purpose on earth? Is it to be a teacher? No. Is it to be a doctor? Yes. No. <laughs> is it to be a lawyer? <laughs> no. Is it to be a singer? No. Is it to be a nurse? Maybe. Oh, no. No. Your purpose on earth was to be a minister for God. Your purpose on earth was to carry the word. Your purpose on earth was to give God glory. Your purpose on earth was to tell God, tell the people of God and the people that are not of God, the sinners and the saints of the goodness of God. You were born to minister for sure. God has already and al already had it in uh in his hand to prepare you and also to repair you for the goodness of God. Amen. He was already, he already knew that you would be uh, needing to be repaired from the past in order to do so, in order to be the mouthpiece that he needs you to be, in order to walk out the purpose that he has called uh, called you for and, and caused in your life. Amen? You are the head, and never forget that you are the head. No one understands what God is doing unless you are connected to God. So when you're not connected to God or you're talking to the other people about what God has told you or what God is saying, usually they have a look on their face like, huh? What? What are you talking about with no understanding, right? But that's why the Bible says do not pass your, uh, cast your pearls among swine because you don't. Whatever God is revealing to you, whatever he's giving you, it's not meant for everybody, amen? They can't get it unless they are connected because usually the word that God is sending forth from the head always flows down amen and we're all and we're and we're getting it as long as we're in our word but it's a surprise to us if we are not amen and I don't ever want the word to be a surprise I don't want what God has going on to be a surprise in my life I don't want it to be a surprise whatever the word is that he has for me to give to somebody else it shouldn't be a surprise amen because we should already be indwelling and encamping ourselves and letting him in, uh, encamp his angels around us and staying in his word and, and allowing him to be uh, minister to us and be our, the God of our lives. Amen. Ministry means truth. Ministry means truth. It's not popular. It's not popular to tell the truth all the time, right? The power of God is so real. And when experiencing it, you should witness and pass it on as a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. So when you get the word of God, or God has given you something, and you, you have it, and you know that you possess this thing, and it's for uh, a particular time or a particular person, it could be a rhema word at the time, or it can just be the word. Just the word in itself is enough to pass on to the next person. Amen. The word in itself is living and breathing. Amen. It truly has life. It truly has life. And we know this because every time that you get into your word, 
it not only ministers to your spirit, but it's for the next person that you're going to come into contact with. It never, when it says it never returns void, that means that it always, whether I read it today, I read it tomorrow, or whether I read it next year, the word of God never changes. Amen? And the word is always uh, living and breathing. You can survive off of one sentence of the word of God for a long time. It's never exhausted. It's never to be, uh, it can never be exhausted. Amen? You know, you could say, somebody can say something to you, and it just roll off your back. You're like, okay. Or they say, you remember when I told you? And you're like, no. You remember? Yeah, yeah, you do. No, I don't. I don't remember that. But one thing about the word is it can never, ever go away like that. Have you noticed that? That's because the word is living and breathing, and it is a true organism. When I say it is powerful and should be used for God's glory, amen? God will secretly confide in you. He will secretly confide in you only if he can trust you, though. So you can sit and read the word verbatim. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted, Matthew 23 and 12. And it's true. Then you go on, Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you restored my health, Psalms 30 and 2. However, it doesn't become light to you unless you allow God's light to shine, to shine on you first. You can read it, and awesome, awesome, okay, great, you're re reading the word of God, but that, they say the enemy even knows the word. But when it becomes light to your life is when God gets the glory. When it can, become, when it can come out of you and be light for someone else's uh, life is when God gets the glory. Amen? Not when you just hold on to it and you harbor it or you say, oh, I read, I read my word. Okay, so you read your word. Okay, but what did it do? Did it make a change? Did it cause a change in your life? Did it bring conviction? Were you, were, were you able to give it to someone else so that they can live and they can breathe on it also? So the word of God is very, very important. And your purpose on earth, as we said it's not to be a doctor, not to be a, a lawyer, not to be a mother, not to be this and that. The purpose is for you to be a witness with the word of God, carrying it night and day. Amen? Carrying it night and day. God rewards our obedience, and he wants us to read his word. He wants us to get into his word, not just for self. He, he is... He is uh, the author and the finisher of your faith. And so with that being said, the author of the book, the one who was inspired, they were inspired by God's word and, and the things that he did. And so I want him to be the author and finisher of my life, of the book of my life. Amen. You want that. And so in order to know what that's supposed to be or for someone else who you don't know uh, to know what that's supposed to be, you would have to give them, um, you would have to give them the word. Amen? Because that's the only way that they can know. Now, you can say something to somebody, you can say something to somebody and, uh, and it not be uh, of God or it is of God. However, when the spirit of the Lord moves within you, in order, it is hot in here. It is hot in here please, the air condition. It, 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 when the spirit of the Lord moves within you, then that is when, that is when uh, it, it is going to penetrate, it's going to penetrate um, and saturate the atmosphere and whomever it is that you're speaking to. Amen. God shall have jurisdiction over you. Always. God shall have jurisdiction over you. Always. The book of life, the book of death, and the book of remembrance is what God has. Which one are you in? Are you in the book of life? Are you in the book of death? Are you in the book of remembrance? Where are you? 
Think about it. Where are you? Amen. No one can touch you because you are his without his permission. You can't be touched. You can't be touched. Can't touch this. Without, literally, can't touch this. You can be in the lowest of the lowest and not be touched. Amen. Unless you get now, when you get out of God's will, you're allowed to be touched. When you when you get out of God's will, you're allowed to be touched. Stay in God's will. God is a good God. He loves you. He's merciful. He has shown us merciful in countless time of him being merciful. And so are you in the book of life? Are you in the book of death? Are you in the book of remembrance? Which one are you in? Hallelujah. I'm glad that nobody can touch me without his permission. Amen. Jeremiah 5 and 25 talks about uh, uh, our sins withhold our blessing. And so that's one of the things that we got to, when we're talking to other people, letting them know that being in sin will withhold all the blessings that God has for you. And we're not talking about just cars we're not talking about just money. We're not talking about just houses. We're not talking about those things. We're talking about even the oil of joy. Hallelujah. Amen. We're talking about the love. Because you're not going to feel love when you're out of God's will. You're not supposed to feel the love. Now, the love is there. But when you step out of his will... You're not going to feel loved by God. And that's the enemy lying to you and telling you that he don't love you because you stepped out of his will. And so it's important that we tell others, unbelievers, stay within God's will. That way you can still reach, uh, uh, receive his blessing, it, receive the blessings. Amen. God is not surprised of your sins. <laughs> he is not surprised of your sin. I don't know what it is. I guess the enemy. I won't say I don't know what it is, but it's the enemy that lies to us and tell us, he didn't think you was going to do that. So because you did it, he really don't like you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, the, it, the enemy be like, you see, oh, you did that. You're a Christian. Well, I'm telling you, God is not surprised. He knows everything. He's not surprised at your sin. We think that we hide it. We think that we cover it up. We think that, oh, God, he didn't know that I was going to go back. He didn't know I was going to turn back that way. Well, and then we, we get into, you know, hypocrite. Well, if he knew that I would, why would he put it in front of me? But why would you go there? Why would you put yourself in that position, getting out of the will of God, then allowing the enemy to be able to touch you? We don't ever want to do that, and we want to remind others, those that are not believers, the same thing. David said it best, amen, in Psalms 119.21. It's good that I'm afflicted, that I might learn thy statues. God has a certain statue. He has a certain way that he wants things, and he will get it by any means necessary. He will get it. He don't care whether you buckled over, you crying, you sad. He's not moved by emotion. Amen? He's moved by your faith walk, though. He's moved by the walk, your walk in Christ. That's what he's moved by. So when we... Oh, Lord, please have pity. Man, he ain't got no pity on trash. He not thinking about it. That ain't what moves him. Amen? He's not, he's not with that. Sin is transgression. When I say it brings iniquity, it brings so much iniquity. I'm telling you, the higher the degree of sin, the higher the iniquity. The higher the degree of sin, the higher the iniquity. And so we got to remember that if I do this, because we be knowing, we be knowing beforehand, we, be, we, be, we hear him, we hear the word of the Lord, we hear God's voice before we do it. We can hear him speaking. 
He even shows us who, what, when, where, and how. He show, he'll show you. And then we still fall into the trap, and it's only because you want it to be out of the will of God. It's not something, oh, it got me, it caught me, oh, the devil, oh. No, <laughs> you allowed yourself to get out of the will of God. John 10 and 27, my sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. God has the biggest voice on, the, on, on earth. It's nothing that you can do. Nobody can get in a microphone and, and, and speak to you audibly or the loudest as they possibly can, louder than God can. God's voice trumps everybody's voice. It's just whether or not you will allow God's voice to be heard. It's whether you will listen to the word of God. It's whether you will listen to the calling that he has upon your life. It's up to you because he's not, he's not going to make you do anything. Amen? You have a will. And, and, and so uh, your mind, will, and your emotions, if you don't subject them under Christ, then he'll step back. He'll allow you to experience to go through, we call it going through, but it's just experiencing whatever it is that you wanted to experience. Or you allowed the enemy to talk you into. Or sometimes we even talk the enemy into helping us sin. Ain't that something? How how you talking in the enemy into helping you sin? Easy. Ooh, if they if they looking like this, it's fits to be on. <laughs> you know, you talk, you allowing. So then the enemy, he taking that, and they over there getting look, looking like this, getting ready to look like this. Oh, if they if they say this, then I'm gonna do this, and then you talking, you let you talking the enemy into helping you get. It ain't always him and talking you into nothing. So we need to quit that. Amen. <laughs> the, the Bible says, "If I be lifted up, I will draw all men." unto me. The Bible says, if I be lifted up, if God be lifted up, amen? So we have to lift him up, not ourselves, not man, not our accolades, not our, uh, not our uh, socialism, not, not what it is that we call ourselves, not our titles. That's not to be lifted up. It says, if I be lifted up, if God be lifted up, God has invested so much in us do you not think that he would not is not concerned and won't fight for you? He's invested so much. I'm not talking about from just when he created you, you know. I'm not talking about that part. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the investment of of uh, warring on your behalf every day. How old are you? He, and he's been warring on your behalf every day. The mercy that he keeps extending to you. Do you not think that that's investment from God? That's investment. He don't have to do that. He doesn't have to give you. He doesn't have to will you mercy, kindness, long-suffering, love. He don't have to do that. But because he's invested so much in you, do you not think he's concerned about you and your living? And if we are going to glorify him, and that's all he wants is to be glorified. That's all he wants is to be glorified and to be praised. He's a jealous God. Let's not forget that. God won't let anything touch you unless you get out of his will. And so he is concerned. He's concerned about your well-being. He's concerned about your, 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 your living. We're not talking about your habitation. We're talking about if, he, if, the, if your praises inhabit, it, you know, because he inhabits the praise of his people. We're talking about the praises that you give him. We're talking about the glory that you extend. You know, we're talking about whether or not you extend mercy and kindness to others. If he extends it and invests it in you, don't you think that he would want you to invest it into somebody else? Who are you? Who are you not to invest the same things that he's invested in you? Amen? God is the master, and he ordains you. He is the healer. He's the one that's going to heal you in order for you to go out and to be that show for for him and to give him glory and to tell others about who he is. 
He is the master of your life. He is, whether you want him to be or not. You can be a sinner all you want to, but he's still the master of your life. You don't get to say, well, he's not the master of my life, so I decide to, I'm going um, to hell. No, that ain't the word. word. <laughs> you don't make your own. You still don't get to make your own choice, but you get to make your own choice. You hear what I'm saying? It's a catch-22. Yeah, you are caught in between a rock and a hard place, and that's how he would want it to be in order for you to follow him, in order for you to do his will. Will you be the watchman on the wall? Yes or no, Jeremiah had been in a moment of discouragement. And, and uh, what God did was he anointed his mouth. But see, he was discouraged because he was being criticized and rejected because he was bringing forth the word. He was telling the people uh, what thus said the Lord, basically. But God brought him out of it by anointing his mouth. Amen? But for what? What, why, why, why do you think that he would anoint your mouth? He, why, he don't, he's not anointing your mouth for you to spew ugly. He's not anoint, anointing your mouth for you to cause havoc. There's life, there's a life and power. Uh, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And so with that being said, he's not anointing your mouth for you to speak death. That's not what he's anointing uh, your mouth for. But it's for you to tell the people of God about the judgment against the wicked ways and against the things that we do in this earth that are not of God. You think Jeremiah was popular? He was not popular. He was not the popular one. He was not the people's choice. <laughs> Amen. People, people, he sent, he, he, God sent Jeremiah to a land where people were burning their own children. They were sacrificing their own blood children. Now, you know, that's some, you know, that's some evil mess going on. You know, that's some sickness in the land. But, but, but we do it every day, though. We sacrifice our own children. We do. We sacrifice our own children. He felt so strong about what God gave him, and he was called, that he was called the weeping prophet because in, inside he wanted to, people to know so bad, and he wanted them to feel the way that God felt about them. He wanted them to get it. You know how you could be telling somebody something and like, you remember, no, you remember, you know, you know. And they like, no, I don't. And you're like, we was right there together. This is what you can't, I, you can, I can't believe you can't remember. You know, and they like saying, I don't remember. But Jeremiah felt so strong about it. He was considered the weeping prophet. And he was so, he was called. Will you cry out for God? Will you cry out for God? I'm asking you, will you? Will you allow the glory of God to flow through, your, through you? Will you allow the glory of God to flow through you to, to, to help someone else? Will you spill out your, soul, your inside so much to the point where you're turned inside out for the greatness and the glory of God? So they call, used to call it sold out. Will you sell out for God? Will you? Will you sell out for him? Will you expose the enemy in the time that you're not popular? In a time when others, you've been, when you've been, you know, you're close to the enemy, will you expose the enemy? Will you expose the enemy even when you are the enemy? Will you expose the enemy even when the enemy is using you and you know it? Will you rebuke yourself? Will you rebuke yourself? Because it's only oppression. It's not, you understand? So in oppression, you, you can come out of that. Because, see, the spirit of God is down within you. So will you rebuke yourself? I've had to say, I, I rebuke that. Whether it be that thought or that whatever came out of my mouth, I rebuke that. You've had to, you've had to, you've had to call that. You have to sometimes say that. 
I renounce that in the name of Jesus. I renounce that from my life. I renounce that thought. I renounce that thing. I renounce it. Will you be shunned for the truth? Will you allow others to shun you for the truth? You know, you don't want to be shunned when you think about it. I don't want nobody shunning me and putting me to disgrace and saying that I'm not this and I'm not that. And, ooh, oh, no, I can't believe it. But will you do it for the truth, for the body? Will you do it for Christ? God is so good. Amen? Amen. Will you be beat on, spit on? Jesus wasn't the only one that got spit on and beat on. Or mistreated? Will you will you, uh, will you allow people to call you peculiar or weird because you are walking in God's way because you are doing what God said? Will you? Because the days that we are coming into now, you're going to have to. You're not going to be able to pity pat a plate. Uh, uh, pity pat and, and, and pokey whatever with anybody and, and act like anything. Because we are de dealing with disembodied demons. Like Pastor said a couple weeks ago, we are dealing with that. And so to play the game with the spirits and with the demonic world and to play the game out there like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to keep you around. And what do you say? Keep them on a leash. Pat them and everything as long as they ain't up in an uproar, you like, okay, just cool. And now it's your pet. Now it's your pet. You know, we make it our pet. Oh, okay, well, I'm in this dilemma, so come on and get them. Okay, well, now, now I'm in the body of Christ right now, so no, I don't want you to. Now, don't rise up. We do. We make it our pet. So if you really want